Hello, in this video, I want to talk about Process Advisor. Uh, we run workshops and in those workshops, we cover Process Advisor just a little bit throughout those workshops. It's always something that raises people's interest, um, but there's been so much change in Process Advisor in the past few weeks that it's due a bit of a, 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 a revamp, a, a, a re-upping uh, in our uh, consciousness because it is an amazing product. So. Let's start with how you can get going. Very practically, how can you get going playing with Process Advisor? First of all, log into Power Automate. You'll need a Power Automate per user license or a trial Power Automate per user license. Go into Power Automate, go to Process Advisor on the left-hand side here. And the quickest way to, to play with it and just have a look at what it does is press on one of these two buttons here. If you press on the Finance one, it will take about two to three minutes, and then you'll end up with a sample workflow to look at. Here's that sample workflow. It's uh, 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 what it what Process Advisor lives for, what it is for. It's mapping out a business process. So here you can see the business process. It's got some uh, steps on it here. Uh, there is invoice entry. So everything starts here, 133 cases. Invoice entry goes down this, 67 go down this path, 66 go down this path. So you get the idea there of these, these um, these business processes and mapping it out into a diagram. That's what Process Advisor does. How does it do that? Well, it has source data to, to do that. Uh, that's the quickest way of getting going and playing with it. Now let's talk about, about how, to, how to generate those from scratch. Those workflows, the, the, the way that they are built is from a data source. And those data sources can be two types. The first type can be known as task mining, and this is where you're recording somebody doing the work. So you might create a business process, share it with people, get them to record themselves doing it, and then all of those recordings are stored centrally, and then you can manipulate that data to generate the flowcharts. That's method one. Source data number two is through structured data and a database. This second one is the most important one for me personally. I think there's more value in that. The first one is mixed results. Uh, there's a lot of pre-work and work that needs doing in that. It has its time and place and is useful if you get the process around it right. But process mining, you can just get going straight away. All you need are three columns of data. So process mining, you create the process, you prepare your source data, you can add additional metrics onto it, upload it, match it all up, and then analyze it. That's how you do it. Uh, but how do you prepare your source data? What data do you need? Um, I want to pause there for a second because you might be thinking, oh, okay, that's a bit too hard now. I, I, it's a bit too hard. Look at what you can do with it, though. So Microsoft acquired a, a product called Mineit in early 2022, and they've just baked it into Process Advisor. And this is the type of thing you can do with it. So imagine this with your data. So here's that, that invoice example again. Um, there are a whole bunch of uh, uh, filters that you can apply on it here. So here's the, here's the process in a nice little desktop app. I can zoom in, I can move around. I can zoom in on one particular um, part of the tree and see what happens around that tree, get some really good uh, uh, data, data points about that. Um, I can select different variants and see them in the overall process map of how they, uh, so this is saying that of the 133, 66 followed this particular path. How cool is that? Uh, if we select two ver the, the top two variations of that process, we've got 75% of cases covered. Uh, in, in So if we're gonna automate it, let's just do this. Let's just automate this, 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 this flow here, and we've knocked out 75% of the processes. That's pretty cool, right? Um, and then if you're a process, uh, um, a process nerd that likes stuff like this. There are heaps of other graphs and data. Look at this thing. This here, you can um, you can play back time, so you can actually see where different things are, uh, where different processes are in in the chain. So there's one that's stuck here. There's one that you can see them flowing through here, uh, playing back time from 16th of you know we're at the 16th of July here. Uh, let's play all the way through. So you can, it's really, really cool getting rich process map of what's going on. Then other stats you can see here. I'm not going to delve in all of these. As I say, if you are a process nerd, this is something you need to install pretty quickly and get your own data into it. So that's the prize, right? So hopefully 
that's woke you up from this boring bit about data. But let's go back to the boring bit about data. To create those maps for your data, you only need three columns. A unique identifier, which is a case ID, a timestamp, and an activity name. So it would look something like this. A timestamp, the case ID, so that's just a timestamp in, in, in date format, date time format. The case ID, uh, this needs to be, well, it doesn't need to be anything as long as it's unique across all cases. It can be letters and numbers, can be just numbers, doesn't need to start at zero. Uh, it just needs to be a unique identifier for that particular process. Uh, and then the activity name, so the thing that happened in that workflow at that time. So that's all, that's all you need of those three things. You can augment it with additional data. If you augment it with additional data, you can then use that data as filters to create charts and graphs based on that, on those filters. So I can see everything that Jesse does, for example, or everything that happens in San Diego. You can filter the graph based on that. But you only need those three columns, really. When we talk about variations or paths, what we mean is that here in this example, case zero and case two follow the same the same steps in the same sequence. So that's known as a path or a variant, interchangeable across the product. You'll see that in a bit of detail there. So that's all I wanted to cover very quickly is uh, pro what Process Advisor is, how to prepare your data to get meaningful insights into your, into your data, and then this neat little tool um, that you can go into. Imagine delving into this with some of your process data. How cool is that? Um, if you need help uh, with uh, how you actually do that in uh, uh, in Process Advisor, it's pretty self-explanatory. But if you do need help, happy to jump on a call, connect with me on LinkedIn, uh, happy to do that. Um, but you just click, click start here and then the process name, put a name and say you want to use data and then off you go. It's pretty, pretty self-explanatory. Um, hope that was useful. Reach out to me, love to chat to you and yeah, good luck process mining. See you later.